Have you been playing around with AI generative art for a while, but want to bring the humanity back to the process? I'm going to take you through a process I picked up working for an in-house design agency to quickly come to a creative consensus and bring the humanity back to AI image generation. Today on Building Dreams. This episode of Building Dreams is brought to you by the new Everly Heights Patreon. Get access to the custom stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights, as well as our morning meeting production diary by supporting us at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. And by StreamYard. Use it like I am to bring your streams to life. Get $10 in free credit by going to streamyard.everlyheights.tv to sign up. I'm Bill Meeks for Building Dreams, where I teach you how to build dreams of your own, just like I'm building the first pilot set in my Everly Heights universe, a sitcom called Very Special. Now, I'm really digging into production here on Very Special, which means I need sets for my actors to perform on. So I brought in my wife and son to help me evaluate about 150 images. There are 20 to 30 for every set I'll need for Very Special. So my basic creative process here is one, make a ton of options. Like I said, by hundreds of different sets. Then two, have humans rate them. And then number three, select the best one based on the scoring metric and then upscale and refine them. Now here's an example of the spreadsheet I use to track our voting. Now in this one here, you'll see I gave myself three different metrics to rate on. That being style, you know, how closely does it hue to how I see very special in my head? How much fun is it? If I look at that, do I get this nostalgic, warm, fuzzy feeling? And then is it ready to go? How much work am I going to have to do in Photoshop to get this ready for production? Now, if you're not a huge Excel head like me, I love making a nice spreadsheet to tabulate data. Uh, you can go to bgxl.everlyheights.tv and get access to both this version that I'm showing you right now and a generic version where you can have up to five people just voting on their general, you know, warm fuzzies that each image gives them. Now, I gave myself three different metrics to grade on, then wrote my wife and son in to give a general score based on their personal taste. I would average my three scores, then I would average my average with the other scores to arrive at a final score. I didn't want to have a situation where my votes counted more than anybody else's. For example, uh, this one, which is supposed to be my character, Mr. Matheson's classroom. I ended up really falling in love with it. It has the style I want, the fun I want, and it's mostly ready to go. I mean, there's a couple, uh, a lot of the Mr. Matheson classroom ones, I ended up getting uh, writing, like chalk writing on the walls. I'll have to clean that up. And I'll have to put some actual mathematical symbols on that board, but... This one, it, it looks really, really good. Now you'll see here on the spreadsheet that, you know, while those were my opinions, not everyone always agreed. Sometimes I would rate something really highly and then somebody else in the group would rate it kind of low and it would end up being somewhere in the middle, which is good. While this is my story, very special is my story. This is my cartoon that I'm making. I want it to appeal to people who aren't like me, which is why I picked the two people in my family who are as about not like me as you can get, my wife and my youngest son. Now, after averaging all of the scores for all of the sets, I found that most of the sets had two or three very similar sets at the top of the heap, which made it very, very easy to kind of uh, pick one which one I wanted. I usually kept the top two or three as long as they look like they were in the same universe, so I can touch them up and I have options for angles while I'm editing. You know, uh, Anything that would look like, you know, two different views of the living room, I would go ahead and keep both of those for, for editing purposes and to give me options uh, when I'm setting up my shots in the animation software. Now I'm including two Excel spreadsheet downloads at bgxl.everlyheights.tv. One with my breakdown of the three scores and the average, and another that lets you vote with up to five people. Just swap out your image names and vote. The score column will update automatically, but I recommend hiding it while you enter your scores so it doesn't influence those scores that you enter. Also, another word of warning, uh, we went through about 150 images, which is a lot. If you have a lot of images, make sure to take breaks, long breaks, so you and the people you're voting 
on the images with don't get tunnel vision. And that's a quick tip on how to bring the humanity back to your AI image generation curation process. As for how you can stay involved and help out, go ahead and sign up for the Discord at discord.everlyheights.tv to stay in the loop. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to work making very special. See you next time. Read the stories and join the team at everlyheights.tv. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Everly Heights. Watch us build Everly Heights in building dreams by subscribing to at Bill Meeks LA on YouTube. Get access to the custom stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights, as well as our morning meeting production diary by supporting us at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. Boom. Boom, boom, shake the room.